forget the airway scenario. And uh, we have the privilege to have here one of the most important expert in airways diseases. So it's a pleasure for me to hand over the podium to Walter Weder. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Enrico. I think we all love airways surgery. And uh, it has a lot of in common with uh, hiking up a steep ridge. Um, we do it rarely. It's fascinating. And the gap between falling down into a disaster or being on track is relatively narrow. However, in experienced hands, well equipped with a clear plan, we can have easily good success. By having said this, we um, airway disease, which end up in airway surgery is relatively rare. It's often a challenge, both from the decision-making, from the perioperative management, and from the technical execution. But it can be done safely in experienced hands, and the three teams have prepared three very interesting cases. I think you will be fascinating, and please get started. So we decided to divide the airway diseases into three subtopics. The first one is a tracheoesophageal fistula, uh, which will be presented by the European team. So I call the European trainee to the podium. Thank you. So our case consists in a Caucasian 51-year-old uh, uh, woman with cardiovascular risk factors. And she was admitted from the, in the emergency department from a type A aortic dissection, and uh, immediate ascending aorta replacement was done. The neurological recovery was poor with cerebral ischemia, persistent motor disorders, and dysphagia. And the postoperative day 20 was needed to perform a percutaneous tracheostomy uh, with bronchoscopy uh, guy due to the prolonged intubation. Also, due to an infection in the sternal wound, a, revision, a surgical revision was needed in the postoperative day 38. And in the context of sepsis, uh, an aspirin pneumonia uh, was obtained in the postoperative day 45. As you can see in these two beautiful pictures, uh, we can see in the most uh, highly pressured area a, a tracheosophageal fistula is nearly one centimeter below the vocal cords and approximately is covering uh, two tracheal rings. And also you can see in the endoscopy what is the balloon of the, of the tube and the tracheosophageal fistula, which is also consistent with the inflammatory contest, the ischemia, and the most, uh, mostly pressure area due to the intubation. So the question for the Team Americas is, what is your initial approach, step one, for the treatment of tracheosophageal fistula? One, surgical repair. Two, airway stenting. Three, esophageal stenting. Four, endoscopic closure of the fistula. Five, distal intubation and feeding tooth placement. Six, no treatment, comfort measures. Okay, now it's up to you. And so we have a wide range of alternatives, excluding lung transplant maybe, but uh, we have all the options from the more conservative to the more aggressive. So it's up to you and uh, it will up to you to, to support your right answer and to not support the other alternatives. Okay, almost done. Okay, good. Please. So after our uh, discussion, we decided that, can you put the, the, the options, please? Okay, thank you. The, the, the correct answer, in our opinion, is uh, number five, the distal intubation and feeding to placement. Uh, we discussed that uh, this is a, a, a very severe patient. He's still in the ICU with infection, and it should be better for her to recover first and then to think uh, of a definitive uh, treatment. Uh, surgical repair, for sure, in the uh, in, uh, late time. Stenting, I, we don't think it's a, a good option for her in this moment. Uh, another, do the endoscopic closure. And no treatment uh, should not be considered. It should treat somehow. So the, the ideal, ideal treatment, in our opinion, is distal intubation and feeding tube placement. Number five. Okay, excellent. So number five for you is the correct answer. So, go on. 
also a uh, variable allelance can allow and a feeding jejunostomy was performed in order to slowly recover the patient from the sepsis and to try to isolate the uh, tracheosophageal fistula. Uh, then with the idea to uh, attend the endoscopic suturing, a uh, Montgomery T tooth uh, was inserted and also you can see in these pictures how uh, he performed with the outstitching Apollo system the suture of the endoscopic view of the fistula in the esophageal part. But unfortunately, as you can see, in an endoscopy performed in the postoperative day uh, 66, you can see that the uh, esophageal, um, tracheosophageal fistula is still present. So the patient was evaluated for surgical repair, but the nutritional, neurological, and motor function was very poor and was sent to a re rehabilitation program. And 11 months after the initial cardiac issue, she was referred to us for consultation after complete the rehabilitation program. So the question for the ASIA team is, when and how do you recommend surgery for tracheoesophageal fistula repair? One, timing is not important, depends on the surgeon. Two, prefer repair with muscle and mentor interposition. Three, esophageal diversion with cervical esophagotomy and feeding gastrostomy without esophagectomy. Four, formal tracheal resection, direct suture of esophagus with interposition of muscle or omentum. Five, operate only when performance status is acceptable. Okay. So again, time for the audience to vote. This, these are scenarios that uh, we all can see irrespective of the different continents. So there should not be any imbalance in the treatment options between among the different continents. Hopefully. So five seconds left. Okay. Okay, good. Um, so Team Asia. Uh, our um, answer is uh, number four, because um, um, after the, uh, the patient is um, nutri is, uh, nutrition uh, status has already uh, improved and uh, the patient insisted to uh, get the surgery. And uh, um, um, for TOF, um, single stage repairment is um, possible uh, if we can cut the fistula and uh, um, make a tension-free closure of the tracheal and uh, two-layer closure of the esophagus. And uh, uh, after this, uh, we should uh, put a tissue to interposition between the two suture lines um, to prevent the re uh, recurrence of um, a fistula. So uh, our answer is four. Okay, so correct answer for a the Asian team is uh, number four. Okay, so now it's time for a scoring. Okay, so first of all, you, you have to score the presentation of the scenario from Team Europe. So we have nine, nine, 10, nine, nine, 10, Eight, 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 eight. So, very good score. Congratulations. So, let's see the, what the score are for the answer from America. So, please vote. Nine, six, and seven. Arvin is nine, ten, nine, ten. Uh, eight, six, eight, nine, and ten from Steve. Okay. And finally, what do you think about the answer from uh, Team Asia? According to the jury, eight, uh, we got seven, nine, seven, eight, 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 nine, ten, nine, and ten from Steve. Good. Okay. So the second subtopic is the airway tumors. So we decided to assign this subtopic to America. So it's up to you. Okay, thank you. Now the question about the airway tumors. Um, we have a 40-year-old lady uh, was referred to our service with a recent complaint of cough and dyspnea on exertion. Physical examination was unremarkable, except for strider and bronchial wheeze. And uh, an X-ray was negative. This is a... Um, CT scan image, uh, which was suggestive of a polypoid mass occupying 50% of the tracheal lumen. You can see the image. 
So uh, flux bronchoscopy reveal, revealed a uh, polypoid lesion on the middle trachea involving about 50% of the trachea. Biopsy, biopsy of the lesion was suggestive of uh, an adenoid cystic carcinoma. The question to Team Asia. Regarding this treatment, which of the following uh, is the correct answer? Preoperative radiotherapy can be applied to reduce tumor length and improve negative surgical margins at operation. Tumor bearing tracheal margins are unacceptable, and every surgical effort should be made in order to obtain a, neg a negative mar uh, tracheal margin. Tumors invading the tracheal carina uh, can be safely resected since surgical morbidity and mortality just does not differ from laryngotracheal or tracheal resections. Complete resection uh, with negative airway margins results in higher survivor than incomplete uh, resection with positive margins, followed by adjuvant radiotherapy. And number five, radiotherapy has a small role in the treatment of adenoid cyst carcinoma and should be only be applied if in an unresectable disease as palliative treatment. Okay. So different options. Again, five different options. Uh, varying from sur surgery and uh, multidisciplinary treatment and uh, the, the problem of the sexual margins and what to do with that. So different possibilities. Okay, are you ready? Three, two, one. Okay, supporting evidence for the correct answer from Asia. Well, we have a very um, hot argument here. We kind of <laughs> make a decision so far. For, I, we would like, we are, we would like for number four, um, complete resection um, should be achieved, but this in this case, it can't be difficult. So we would go for the number four and uh, supported by the adjuvant the radiotherapy. And uh, we have that opinion that um, uh, cystic adenocarcinoma is uh, sensitive to the radiotherapy, so we can, in, in between number one and four, so we'll, we'll finally we make a decision for number four. Okay. <laughs> so in the end, you chose uh, uh, number, number four. four. Okay, correct answer, number four. Okay. <clears throat> then? Let's move on to the second question. Now the question to Team, team Europe. Um, surgical resection of the case was assembled in a tumor board. Please re, uh, select the correct answer. Rigid bronchoscopy with core out resection of the lesion followed by radiotherapy is less invasive and achieves long-term results that are comparable to surgical resection. Surgical resection should be defined uh, intraoperatively R1 tracheal margins are unacceptable, and every surgical effort must be made in order to obtain negative tracheal margin. Tracheal microscopic positive margins should be complemented with post-operatively uh, post-operative radiotherapy. Complete resection with negative airway margins does not result in higher survival than incomplete resection with positive margins, followed by adjuvant radiotherapy. Post-operative radiotherapy should always be performed in surgical cases, regardless of the AR status. Okay, again, many options again. So we decided to, to choose also the airway tumors because uh, even if they are rare, I think that they might be a challenge for, for any thoracic surgeon and sh you should be prepared to treat them. So 10 seconds. Okay, Europe. Okay, so uh, we think that the correct answer is the answer number three, 
uh, tracheal microscope with positive margin should be complemented with postoperative radiotherapy. Uh, number one, it refers to read bronchoscopy. We will attend to a more palliative uh, resection, but not radical resection like in surgery. And even if you complete this non-radical uh, resection with radiotherapy, it's true that radiotherapy is less invasive, but our aim here is to obtain a free margin and to eliminate the malignancy for, uh, from the airway. Number uh, two, uh, we think it's not uh, a correct uh, option because we can, uh, sometimes we are not able to obtain air zero. So it depends on the situation and on the clinical case. Of course, the first aim is to obtain air zero, but uh, sometimes we need to lead with situation that we cannot obtain the air one because maybe the tumor is not uh, completely in the, in the luminal airway and has also extraluminal component, for example. The fourth option, uh, that uh, speak that complete resection with negative airway margin uh, do, does not result in higher survival is completely uh, contrary with our option because uh, we think that the survival is related with R0 uh, resection. And the five option, uh, post-operative radiotherapy should not be performed in all surgical cases, just in the case where, for example, as in the option three, the microscopic margin is positive. So final option is three. Your final answer will be number three. Okay. Great. So again, ready for the jury to uh, score. First, so we have to score the presentation, the quality and uh, how they presented. Nine, nine, Julia, seven, nine, Walter, 10, eight, eight, seven, eight, eight, and nine. Okay. And next, the answer from Asia. Uh, Five from Frank, nine, Juliet, seven, Arvin, eight, eight, six from Alessandro, eight, nine, nine, seven, Ricardo, and seven, Steve, okay? And finally, the, the answer from Europe, uh, again, are you ready for scoring? Frank is eight, it's nine, ten, eight, nine, ten, ten, nine, eight, nine and nine. Okay, thank you. So we uh, are approaching to the last uh, scenario. So we decided to uh, address the issue of benign airway diseases, so which are not less important than the malignant. So please. <clears throat> A 22-year-old man sustained the right-sided chest trauma by a motor uh, accident. On initial evaluation in the emergency department, he was noted to have a right pneumothorax with no evidence of rib fractures. He was managed with tube drainage, and his chest tube was removed on postoperative 10 days after complete lung re expansion with no air leak. He subsequently presented after three months with left chest pain and shortness of breath. He underwent a chest x-ray. Here is the x-ray. Um, here is a question to Team Europe. What should be done next? One, repeat, repeat intercostal drain insertion. Two, chest CT. Three, fibroptic bronchoscopy for emergency thoracotomy. Okay, 30 seconds. Okay, different options. So I hope you have clear in mind the chest x ray, the different in the transparency between the two hemithoraxes. So again, 10 seconds, five, okay. So we are looking for the, your answers. So actually, uh, our final answer is number three, fibrotic bronchoscopy. Uh, 
The number one repeat intercostal drain insertion is true that in this case of complete pneumothorax, probably we can uh, plan to do the intercostal drain insertion, but we have an antecedent is that we uh, do not have refractors and we have pneumothorax. So we cannot justify the pneumothorax due to land refraction and maybe the problem is in the airway. Uh, second case, JCT is good option for diagnosis, but the uh, routinary and protocolized diagnosis of the airway, the tracheobronchial uh, pro problems related to the uh, trauma is fibroctic bronchoscopy, because we can know where exactly is the lesion and we can assess the diagnosis more precisely than with the chest CT. And emergency thoracotomy, I think, is not the case because the patient is, stable, uh, is in, a, in a stable situation and we don't need to perform emergency thoracotomy, not for this case and not for an usual uh, complete radiological pneumothorax. So final answer is number three. Okay, so let's see what uh, our Asian friends did. Um, his fibrotic bronchoscopy showed a fibro uh, fibrotic uh, structure in the right main bronchus, two centimeter from the crina. Now here is a question to Team America. Which of the following consideration is true? One, owing to delayed presentation, his chances of lung salvage are worse than if he was diagnosed as initial evaluation. Two, he should be offered bronchial sleeve reconstruction and his prognosis will be the same as those diagnosed immediately after trauma. Three, he should first undergo bronchoscopic therapies for both strict dilation and stent if necessary to evaluate whether his lung is salvageable. Four, he should be offered a pneumonectomy since his lung is now likely to be diseased and atelectatic. Okay, so, ready? So now you have more elements to, to approach this patient and to offer a curative uh, treatment. Okay, so it seems that you are all agree. Let's, eat. Let's see if, uh, what is your correct answer. So five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So um, in, after our discussion here, we chose the number three option. Um, he should go under uh, bronchoscopic therapies to first uh, for bronchial dilation and uh, with stenting, if necessary, to evaluate uh, if the lung is sedgeable. Um, uh, going through the other options. Um, um, uh, maybe the, 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 there is salvage for the lung. Um, uh, not, no, we're not sure if it's the, the same as in the initial evaluation, but um, we, we think he do. Um, uh, this sleeve reconstruction, it's um, uh, maybe a later option, uh, but uh, we think she, he should be he should go through bronchoscopic therapies first. And pneumonectomy, we don't think it's a better option for this case. Uh, first of all, he should go through other therapies first and uh, leave pneumonectomy as the, the last um, treatment possible. Okay, thank you. So let's see what the correct answers are. Oh, okay, then we have to score first. Uh, the presentation, quality seven, seven, nine, <coughs> nine, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten, eight, and nine. This is the quality of the presentation. And how about the quality of the answer from the first answer from Europe? Nine, six, eight, six, eight, Alessandra, nine, nine, eight, eight, nine, and seven. And the answer from uh, America, how did you convince it? Seven, nine, nine, seven, <coughs> nine, eight, Seven, eight, nine, seven, uh, we got seven. Okay, so I will invite Walter to provide us the correct answers. With your presentation, yes. <coughs> you will have the
the audience at the end. Afterwards. Oh, okay, sorry. I'm not the expert, <laughs> not the audience. Okay. So, what are the correct answers? Um, so the first, um, the first question is uh, regarding the uh, tracheoesophageal fistula. Uh, and I think this was very nicely discussed by the colleague from the American team. He pointed out it is important, the timing. And this patient was already a very, very sick patient. Uh, so he denied to do upfront surgical repair. And uh, he recommended endoscopic uh, closure of the fistula. Uh, and he recommended the distal intubation and feeding tube placement uh, in order to bring the patient through this acute phase. Uh, anything else can be considered thereafter. And uh, I think this was very nicely discussed by you. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then the second question, which came to uh, team uh, uh, fr uh, from Team Europe, was placing uh, a tube, and uh, how would you recommend uh, surgery thereafter? And the uh, correct answer is a formal tracheal resection, direct suture of the esophagus with an interposition of a muscle or the omentum. And uh, also here, it's very nicely said, the timing uh, is um, the, the, the procedure requires clean correction of the airway leak. Um, and uh, lastly, the uh, um, airway tumors. Um, the correct answer was that a complete resection with negative airway margins results in a higher survival than incomplete resection with positive tumor margins followed by adjuvant radiotherapy. Uh, and so finally, the, these are the references. And lastly, the trauma case which is a uh, delayed, sorry? Oh, okay, sure. Um, and it is very well known that uh, after in adenoid cystic uh, carcinoma that the my, uh, uh, margins can be positive and post-operative radiotherapy is indicated. Um, and then finally, the uh, uh, trauma case. Um, there was the case where of a patient who had a pneumothorax uh, in combination with trauma and came back three months thereafter. And uh, here, I would say probably most people would do a repeat intercostal drain insertion. Uh, followed maybe by chest uh, CT scan and their fiber optic bronchoscopy, but they expect that the correct answer is directly fiber optic bronchoscopy uh, when you have a first recurrence of a pneumothorax, even after a trauma case. I think it's very difficult to uh, uh, consider the option that you have missed a tracheal disruption uh, uh, with this history. So I'm uh, very surprised about the uh, European colleagues you have identified the correct answer. Um, then regarding the treatment, uh, um, I think it's also debatable. The correct answer here is bronchial sleeve re re resection upfront and the prognosis will be good. I have no doubt about when this is done uh, surgically correct. Uh, on the other hand, if uh, surgical trauma is expected, uh, it could be possible uh, that at least in an institution where you have good interventional bronchoscopy, that you would select what the American colleagues have suggested to a bronchoscopic intervention and try to reopen 
the uh, access to the distal uh, airways to find out if the lungs were re-evaluated. Uh, so the correct answer, according to the team Asia, is uh, the number two, but I think there are, it's debatable also for three. Uh, now, Let's see what the audience replied. Oh, this is the question one. So the most, the, the audience uh, did chose the right answer. Question two, again, there is very good concordance with the question three, very good. Question four, oh, excellent. Question five, yes, exactly as you did, as you explained. It's debatable, but I think it's acceptable. And question six, very good, okay. Good. So, your take home message? <laughs> so, okay, coming to airway surgery um, uh, after a blunt uh, chest trauma. This is extremely rare that you find out a delayed uh, uh, airway disruption. Uh, and there are, anyway, just a few cases described and observed. Overall, airway disruption is less than 0.5% of all chest trauma. It's mostly on the right side and in the main bronchus. Uh, lobar bronchus disruption is less than 10%. The diagnosis uh, uh, is and can be a real challenge because it's often missed at the initial assessment since uh, um, patients have symptoms which are often associated with rib fractures or other injuries because they have dyspnea, they have pneumothorax, they have subcutaneous emphysema and often just other uh, explanations are given for these cases. Uh, the delayed diagnosis of a airway disruption is often after weeks, months, or even years. And it uh, is dyspnea, pulmonary infections, wheezing. Uh, CT images um, initially often miss a disruption when there is a gap, not a gap seen between the bronchial walls, because it, it can be in this uh, envelope, bronchial envelope, it can be covered and just a little air leak which heals uh, thereafter. Um, bronchoscopy at the end then finds fibrous tissue obstruction um, uh, which obstructs the lumen. And uh, surgical repair whenever possible. It's usually also feasible and uh, it's often not much more complicated than upfront reconstruction. Uh, laser ablation has only a temporary effect and stent as a long-term treatment is also not a good option since you have granulation uh, um, tissue uh, as a problem. We are probably most familiar with uh, dealing with adenocystic carcinoma of the ar airways. About half uh, of the malignant tracheal tumors are, also, uh, are associated with adenocystic carcinoma. The diagnosis is often delayed because it's mislabeled as asthmatic complications with street door dyspnea, cough, um, and uh, uh, dyspnea uh, activity. The mean age is around 50 years. Um, CT images are essential, as shown here. Uh, it usually shows the tumor location, the size of the tumor, the length, the mural depths, and you can also evaluate the extrinsic comet, uh, component and the mural uh, growth. There's no TNM uh, system existing, and um, me uh, metastases are uh, usually rare, especially in the early. Uh, detection. Um, bronchoscopy is key for biopsy, for the location 
and the length of the disease. And uh, in general, uh, AOS is done, an ultrasound of the esophagus to find uh, the involvement of the esophagus or exclude, however, even in close contact and extramural growth, it is not so frequent that the esophagus is also involved. And first treatment of choice, as uh, shown here, is surgery, segmental tracheal, tracheobronchial uh, resection and reconstruction, um, uh, uh, carinal reconstruction, and most often in combination with radiation uh, therapy because, uh, because R1 resection is very, very frequent. Endoscopic resection is only done for deobstruction uh, temporarily and uh, unresectability, uh, unresectability uh, can be seen mostly due to the length of the disease um, and rarely because of metastasis. We all know we can resect up to four, sometimes up to six centimeters. It depends from the constitution of the patients. Avoid neoadjuvant radiation. Um, use it palliatively in unresectable cases, but it is used, uh, as said before, as an adjuvant treatment, usually six weeks after resection. The surgical mortality is very low in experienced uh, centers, and the five-year survival is approximately half of the patients. Now, finally, uh, the problem of a quiet tracheoesophageal fistula. I think all centers have experience uh, with these problems, despite it is rare, uh, usually a result of a <coughs> penetrating trauma, mostly iatrogenic, uh, either due to a false intubation or um, traumatic intubation or uh, tube pressure, and mostly uh, located in the upper third of the trachea. Since most of these patients are intubated, uh, the, the diagnosis is often delayed. It's uh, aspiration of bilious secretion, aspiration pneumonia, leads to a, a esophagoscopy and uh, making the diagnosis. The management, as shown in this case, requires usually a surgical intervention, but the timing is important. Um, in, as shown in this case, you can delay and stabilize the patient by the tube placement distal to the fistula. Uh, you elevate the head preferentially to avoid uh, further uh, aspiration and uh, put in a, few, a feeding uh, gestionostomy tube. Surgery has all kinds of variations. In generally, general, a tracheal uh, resection is straightforward. Very small holes can be directly sutured, and this esophageal lesion can be sutured, but we always require an interposition of a muscle flap or a momentum. The outcome, the surgical mortality, is usually higher not because of surgery itself, it's uh, because these patients are often very sick due to the septic state of the uh, esophageal tracheal fistula. Uh, and uh, they have uh, prolonged pulmonary infection because you do surgery into, normally into a pulmonary infection. I think, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Volder. And could I just take this uh, um, time to say thank you very much uh, to all of our experts for the effort you've put into uh, preparing your discussions. I'd like to thank the captains for uh, uh, coordinating their teams and for getting the questions in. Very interesting range of questions. Uh, thanks very much for that. I thank the participants for their uh, very nerve-wracking job of, uh, of answering the questions. I think you've all done very well. You should all be very proud of yourselves. And I'd like the audience to give them all a round of applause, please.